I was born in Austin, Texas, Orrin Alva Atchison, in 1926, June the 12th. My grandfather was a German. He was born in Germany, come over here, landed in Galveston, and moved in out there at what we call Dessau. Mm -hmm. And he bought that farm. Uh, he bought a farm there and a farm down in uh, Edna, Texas. Mm -hmm. And then he bought some lots, city lots in Archie City. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what happened to that. Chop cotton, pick cotton, cut corn tops, plowed, all that farm work, and went to Fluggerville School, two-story red brick building, which now is a Timberman School. Three brothers, the oldest one, he passed away. And I had brother Floyd, Larry, and a sister. And they're all passed away. Wow. I'm the oldest one, the oldest one living. Mm -hmm. And I got into the Army, took my basic training up here at Fort Hood, 78th Infantry Division. And when I finished that, <coughs> 14 weeks of it, of training, boarded freight uh, train, went to Chicago, from Chicago to Baltimore, Maryland. And there, I forget to count, boarded the ship USS George Washington, it was a captured German transport ship from World War I. It took me 28 days to sail the Atlantic Ocean to Liverpool, no, it was Southampton, England. Stayed there one day, out anchored. And then that night, I was put on a landing barge. And the door flapped down in front and off we ran. And went to a, a hotel hangar in Paris, not La Havre, France. Mm -hmm. Had supper, my first, third, meal in the 28 days that I've eaten the spaghetti. Boy, that was delicious. <laughs> okay. And I had that, and then they put me on a train, box cars, cattle cars. with all the troops went to Troy, France. Got off, and it was a camp, Lucky Strike. It's a replacement camp. And there they put me in a cattery division to train the troops for jungle fighting. I had to pull the targets up for them to where they could shoot it. And then when I did that for two months, and they transferred me to Paris, France, no, Versailles, Versailles, France, to a German PW camp, prisoner of war 
where there was 14, 15, and 16-year-old boys to guard them. And they were, they were something. They were good kids. They hated Hitler. They didn't like him. They were homesick and this and everything. And I'd give them a cigarette when they wanted it. And boy, they all flocked around me like my little nephews. They flocked around me because they knew I was going to give them some money. How did the young prisoners entertain themselves? Ball, played ball, mm -hmm. and whatnot. Come to me for a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> That's their pastime, smoking that cigarette. Mm -hmm. And my PX called for five packages of regular brand and two packages of off brand like Cools, uh, this filter kill cigarettes, I thought, can't think of the name now. It was Riley's, and I'd say that and give it to them. And that's why they all flocked around me. <laughs> I imagine. That man said, I don't know how in the world you did to them, but they show sure all flocking around you. They volunteer to be with you. I said, I treat them right. He says, well, that's good. That's good. After that, the war ended. They transferred me to this hotel to guard the second floor for President Truman, French de Gaulle, Winston Churchill, and Joseph Stalin and their secretaries to decide how to divide up Germany. Stalin wanted all of it, but he didn't get it. He got the eastern part of Germany, which included Berlin. Mm -hmm. And that made him mad. Oh, he was angry. Woo-wee. I had to salute him. He went, huh, and took off walking. He didn't like that because I was American. When you were with, the, when you were with the, the four superpowers in that room, were there, was there, were there other guards there, or were you the only one? Oh, no, no, there's was, was two doors, one on this end and one on that end, and there's a guard there and a guard on the inside, and the guard here, and the guard on the inside of that door. So it had to pass two <laughs> guards before they could get in there. But they, they How long did the deliberation take that day? The whole day. All day? Uh-huh. They had about three days of talks. And then when they settled that, each one got their part of France, of Germany. He, uh, he transferred me to this finance office to guard the vault that held a payroll of the servicemen and the 
employees, government employees, the payroll. In France? In Paris, France. And on this one, and I couldn't touch the vault. <laughs> I had the strict orders not to touch it. That went all perfect. And then I got the ultimatum to be transferred to a northern port camp somewhere up north where it was ice and snow and, and I'm allergic to cold. Oh, I hated it. But to sign up to the regular army because I was a draftee army in the draftee, what they call the draftee army to join the regular U.S. Army. And I joined that for three years. So they discharged me out of the draftee Army and enlisted me into the regular Army for three years. <coughs> they sent me home all the way from France to my home out here for my 60 day furlough. When that was up, they, I reported to Fort Sam Houston and they transferred me back to Fort Hood and I stayed there for three months. And from there they sent me to Camp Polk, Louisiana to Camp Polk, down by D. Ritter. I stayed there for a year. And then they transferred me from there to Fort Sill, Oklahoma, as a range guard. That's MP again. And I stayed there till I was discharged in uh, 47, and that was an interesting place. It had a guard the range, keep the civilians and the military personnel out of the impact area where the bullets were landed. They didn't want them killed, so they okay. And then I pulled my duty there and said they assigned me to a little cell, cubbyhole, a window, and a door with a padlock on it. That was a cell of Geronimo the Indian chief wow. <laughs> pulled guard duty there. Keep the people from looking in and pitching stuff to him and that was out. He get, got nothing, had a cot, had straw hay as a bed. That's what they, he slept on. I was transferred to the Third Army, General George S. Patton's Army. He found out that I could talk and understand German fluently. So he said, you're the man I'm looking for, and he transferred me to this German PW camp to guard those PWs. And which I, I went, had to know, go. Do you know what they did with the boys after the war? They sent them home mm -hmm. for discharge. I, I discharged at Fort Sill, looking for a job. Every place I went, sorry, just filled. Sorry, just filled. 
third time, I got mad. I turned around and walked out of the sheriff's office and walked by the recruiting office. I said, I'm just going in here. <laughs> and I went in there and I volunteered for three years into the Air Force. <laughs> so I spent three years in the Air Force. What did you do? Cut grass, drove a tractor. <laughs> it's just little general work, and uh, mostly as an exterminator, sprayed uh, the insecticides for the mess hall for the flies, mosquitoes, mm -hmm. and everything. <laughs> and that was my rug, my, my regular job. Mm -hmm. And I got discharged, I come home looking for a job. Sorry, we don't have none. Sorry, won't buy the barber school. I said, I just go in here, so asked him, I said, you got a vacancy? Yes, sir, starting the first. Just six months schooling to learn to be a barber, six months. So I thought, okay, sign me up. So I went six months to barber school, got my license. After I got my license, I barbered for 24 years <laughs> in South Austin. And then from there, the, the boss man sold his barber shop that left me out looking. Looking again. Yes, and I was working on a gentleman who was working for the state mental health and retardation center out at uh, Del Valley. Uh, what is that name of that? Travis State School. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Travis State School. I stayed there for 10 years. Uh -huh. yeah. No, 20. 20 years? 20 years there. And I retired. And I haven't done nothing since. <laughs> <laughs> My first wife passed away. I was married to her. Her for 20? I thought you said 32 years. I think you got married 20, 26 years, I believe it was. And then I married her to 39. 39 years to her. My war department. Oh, the war department. Uh, she's, she said, my war department, I told her she would made a darn good inspector general in the Army. That's awesome. <laughs> the best. That's great. Boy, I'm telling you, I can't do nothing right. It's all wrong. You're hilarious. It makes me mad. I go sit in the house. And a nook with the chair and talk to my puppies till I get over my bed spell. There you go. Then I come, well, I'm all right now, ma'am. How had Pflugerville changed when you came Ooh. back? <laughs> but what was it, 300? population, mm -hmm. and then when I moved down here, it's a couple of thousand. It got big, triple size. Mm -hmm. My grandfather's farm came into uh, Fligaville Estates mm -hmm. out there. 
right. That was my grandfather's farm. How about that? And I farmed all that land. Mm -hmm. And what crops did you grow? Huh? What crops did you grow? Everything. Everything. <laughs> Feed, cane, cotton, mm -hmm. corn. That's about it. It's something to do all the time. <laughs> something to do. That's right. All the time. All the time. Mm -hmm. The worst part is chop cotton and pick cotton. I hated that. And I was glad to get into the service. Mm -hmm. were, were most of the young men your age gone to the service when you were there as well? Ma'am? Were most of the young men your age also in the service? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. What was your greatest contribution in the in the military, what meant the most to you that you that you did? All of it. I liked it all. Mm -hmm. I guess this the, being the MP. Did you were you asked to be an MP, or did you volunteer to be an MP? I don't know, ma'am. They just he just put me in it. They just said you were one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're the man I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, yes, sir, as you say, sir. <laughs> I hear you might have been in the National Guard. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I about 10 months in the National Guard. Yeah? Now, when was that? Huh? When was that? Before I joined the Air Force. Oh, wow. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> What'd you do in the National Guard? Hut full, hut full. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was quartermaster wow. down here at uh, Camp Mabry. Mm -hmm. Quartermaster Corps to put that uh, food to the troops. What would be your advice to young men and women right now about military life? It's a wonderful life, folks. Go in and enjoy it. It's not go hurt you. It's an experience. It, it, is, it really is.